Hey everyone, welcome to today's podcast on Feels Good. I am Jacqueline Fernandez. And I'm Amanda Cerny. Sharing time with someone who is guaranteed to make you feel good. Amanda, would you please do the introduction? I'm so super excited. One of the only two comedians that freaking sold out Madison Square Garden's (laughs) arena space. He developed a massive following that is both impressive and inspiring. Not only that, but recently he presented a benefit table read of Fast Times at Ridgemont High, drawing more than 4 million online viewers and raising over $135,000 to benefit Sean Penn's cores and Reform Alliance's COVID-19 relief efforts. Please welcome Dan <laughs> Cook. <laughs> wow. Whoa, that was, good. that was impressive. Just the <sighs> fact that you... you- you fit all that in there. In one <laughs> I breath. didn't want to miss anything. <laughs> Welcome. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, I I watched that whole table read, by the way, and I was blown away by it. I loved oh it gosh. so much. Such a great idea. Yeah, it was. You know, it was one of those things where, you know, when COVID hit this year, of course, everybody, all our lives were capsized. Right. Everybody found themselves completely off our our schedule, our, you know, whatever your, you know, goals were for the year, everything was so, you know, thrown out of whack. And I found myself um, sort of in a rut because as a live performer, week after week, I was, you know, sitting at home and, and missing the stage and missing that creative outlet. I was like, I need that. I need that uh, ability to entertain people. And so I had known Sean Penn for a number of years and uh, I reached out to him and I said, I, I think I have a way to, to do something that could raise a lot of money and awareness and more than anything, just bring a lot of joy to people, which we need right now. Yep. Um, and he was so excited. He was gung ho. I pitched it to him. He was like, what do you need? And I said, we just need some big, big celebrities to, you know, come in and have some fun with us. And we were fortunate to do that. Huge. Wow. I mean, you had... Morgan Freeman, Shia LaBeouf, Jennifer Aniston, Brad Pitt, John Legend, Jimmy Kimmel, Ray Liotta, Sean Penn, of course, and Julia Roberts, So, uh, which I love. And I am obsessed with Julia Roberts. So when I saw her on there, too, I was like, hello. That was so great. Yeah, that was such a – having a moment, I had a scene with her where I made her laugh in the scene, and she did, like, that big Julia Roberts laugh, like a pretty Uh, woman laugh. Pretty woman. (laughs) And I was oh. just in my head like, oh my gosh, that's like a highlight real moment that I could make Julia Roberts laugh, you know, out of the blue like that. It was so fun. It was so great. It is amazing actually how um, quarantine and COVID actually brought out so much creativity in people. And I think like also just got people to like do such amazing work. Um, I think it brought out a side of people as well. That was just like, I mean, like you putting out that thing together. I mean, there were so many like new businesses that also came out of like COVID out of the pandemic. Um, Amanda made wine. (laughs) She made her own wine. (laughs) Which she brings on to the podcast. But it is that thing, right? Where it's like you, you're, you're tested. These are, these are um, unprecedented moments in, in the world, but it's individually, and I'm sure you've, you've felt this way this year as well. Um, there were many times where it was like you could easily get depressed and you could go into, a, yep. you know, into some sheet therapy, just stay in bed with the blanket up. And, and I think that certain people uh, do thrive in these kinds of situations. Um, and it's nice to be connected with people like that because other, if you're not around people that are going to keep you motivated – then it's sometimes it's hard to find that in yourself. So I think it's all about that teamwork of creating a community of people around you who are like, okay, let's make the best of this bad situation. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. That's exactly what we were discussing as well. Like when we were talking about just business and getting into business, it's the same thing. You've got to be so specific about your company and definitely about having people keep you motivated. I mean, like, honestly, you being a comedian as well, (laughs) I would like definitely have you as part of my group because it's all about positivity (laughs) and laughter. And obviously you're super enterprising as well. You're creative. So, um, was there, was there, I mean, like as a kid, were you, pretty sure that you would want to get into comedy or was that something that just like came about? How are you as a kid? Yeah, I think a a lot of my 
admiration for comedians was I, I was a, I was an introvert and I was a really kind of a lonely kid. Um, wow. I, I was the fly on the wall, wallflower, whatever you want to say. Like I was the quietest kid in school. Nobody would have expected I was going to be a comedian, but I admired people that could get on stage and enjoy being present. And I felt like it took me, even in my comedy career, it took me a lot of years to feel really comfortable in my skin and really, and really present. Um, but I knew stand up would be a direct line to that because you can't not be in the moment when you stand in front of a group of people, right? It's my worst, it's my worst fear, by the way. Is it stand really? Up, oh my God. No, I, I would never. Like Amanda said she'll pay to see me like not be on stage, but it is my worst fear. And if you weren't- have, have you had to do it? Have you, have you been no, in front of the people to speak? It, it's crazy. I, I, could, I could dance in front of a thousand, yeah. thousands of people. I could sure. dance. I could perform. I could never like try and crack a joke. I would, I'm mortified of that idea. But I don't think, I mean, I guess there's some people that naturally are just like love just everybody, center of attention, everybody looking at them. But when you're on a stage full of like thousands, tens of thousands of people, it's a completely different energy. And sometimes... Um, I haven't ever sold out Madison Square Garden or anything yeah. like that yet. <laughs> yet. yet. <laughs> um, I have done speaking appearances like for just how to build um, a presence online and growing your social media and how social media is so important in business. And I've spoken in front of thousands of people, but I... It, for me, it's easier doing that than speaking in front of small groups of people. Right. Why oh. is that? Like, I, I, think, I think that's probably because maybe the lighting's different. I don't know. Or maybe it's just like... The lighting? Just, yeah. Because, <laughs> no, I swear, all you see is just like lights and you don't really see people's faces. <laughs> like, I go up there and I'm just like, oh, like lights on me. Okay. And then it's just like all kind of a blur. And maybe my vision's bad. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if this is, if this is anything um, any of you have tried, but like they always say if you have, if you have stage fright, and I do, like I cannot speak in front of people. Um, like small crowds, as I can I'm complete opposite of you Amanda but like do they say you just picture everyone naked but like when you're in that situation there's no time to even do something like that so I don't know like what what was it like in the beginning then for you like how did you get over it were you like well, initially were you like freaking out yeah you know and just quickly speaking to what Amanda said the smaller crowds are harder because once you're in front of multi thousands of people, it really does become, I would say like when I would do stadiums or arenas, that's an event and you feel like you're a part of an event, like a huge concert or a, or a, a sporting event. Something about being in front of just a small group of people where there's almost like a, a, a quiet before you're getting a laugh or a reaction to something you're, you're, you're you know, speaking about or, or sharing or educating. Um, it's vulnerability. It's really vulnerability. And I think that where a lot of people in the arts really want to be is where can you meet performance, but bring your vulnerability. So, so many years you're trying to get away from that. Like, oh, I don't want to let them see me um, not shine. And then it takes years and years to cultivate a voice to finally go, no, actually, what's relatable is when they understand that I'm a real person, when they understand that I'm vulnerable or I could be afraid. And so when I first started doing stand up, I was I was also kind of running away from that side of things. I just wanted to be like at the helm. I wanted to be the coolest person in the room kind of, you know, element. And it takes many, many, many years in, in stand up to finally let your guard down, even though you're still in charge of that audience's evening. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, That's a great tip, actually. <laughs> I remember watching um, one of your specials, the retaliation one, of course. But um, And I, I've recently been hearing about Karens and, like, all the memes of Karens and everything. And I'm like, that – I feel like the first time I ever heard of a Karen was during that special – and because it was on the retaliation one, right? right? And it was everybody has that one friend. There's always one friend in the group that everybody hates, right? 
<laughs> I'm butchering it. You're better telling it. But it was. Um, <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm bombing up here. Small groups kill me. Um, but it was the and it was Karen. Nobody. Karen's a bastard, right? So. I, you were the. Did you create the Karen? Was it you that first like called out the? Karen? Do Karens come out to you and be like, "Hey, uh, why would you do that to us? Yeah, so, <laughs> why would you stereotype us?" Yeah, a lot of years. Karens were not pleased once I. Oh my god. That routine for me, it was like, well, the reason I came up with the, what I used the name Karen because growing up in comedy, they say, um, "ka" sounding words or buh sounding words are funnier. <laughs> and that was something that you learned very, very early <laughs> on in comedy. So I was like, okay, I can't use like, wow. you know, Maureen or Lisa. Karen just had such a, there's so something true. in that word that's funny, there, but still derogatory. <laughs> there's a ring to it for sure. <laughs> yeah. I have a cousin, Karen. She was not happy that I was, you know, I put that out there. But recently <laughs> now that Karen's have become like synonymous with, uh, you know, like poor white woman behavior or something, it, mm. it, it got stuck on them and people keep asking me, did you start it? And I'm like, I guess in a roundabout way, but, um, but no, no, I'm, I don't want Karen's against me anymore. <laughs> oh no, I know. <laughs> I like think the social, yeah. Sorry, yeah, Amanda. Stere- <laughs> no, it's fine. The stereotype. But um, I, I think you may have seeded it. I think it's hilarious. You know, I, I understand the struggle. If it was an um, Amanda joke, it would have been rough. <laughs> <But> <laughs> the fact that it's Karen, I, I think it. I we're think we're it's good, funny. but yeah, we're good. <laughs> I mean, hey, beat the stereotypes. That's what we all do. So, so, we so, was there it. were there were there Karens like literally coming up to you and like being like, yeah. "Why did you do that?" Well, there were Karens that would come to after my show to a meet and greet and want to prove to me that they were a great person. So it became, it became sad they were like, you would like me. You would want to hang out with me. I'm not like that. You know, I'm not, I know it's just the name that I picked for a certain kind of individual in a group. But uh, I don't think that Karen is going to be uh, – in the baby naming book any longer after this era. Oh my God. Wow. You should name, I, you should name your kid, one of your kids, Karen. <laughs> the, the, right? The ultimate comeback. I have yeah. a <laughs> Karen, I'm bringing Karen's back into both. I remember when I, I came to you and I, we shot a Vine together when Vine was still alive. And, right. and at that time you're like, oh wow, like you're growing this huge following. That's awesome. And then, at the same time, it's like you did this way before most people on MySpace, like right. growing that and then even advertising your, your stand up or your tours or like where you're going to be and performing next on right. your own MySpace and not even having to pay for advertising because you had your own built in audience already. Like that's so forward thinking and nobody else is really utilizing it that way. And well, now it, brands want it, but. It was, it was an amazing era when, it, when social media first really hit because I grew up, I love tech, and I was huge into the idea of like grassroots following. How can you, I wanted to be entrepreneurial. I wanted to, I wanted to be able to carve out my own path in comedy. And at, at that time when I first started doing you know, MySpace, Facebook, whatever was, you know, the thing then, well, mainly MySpace, there really was only one avenue to being an overnight kind of uh, person who made it. And that was like Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. If you didn't do Saturday Night Live or you weren't on the cast, there was really no other outlet. And I thought, well, if they don't, you know, want me, if they don't accept me, how else can I, you know, meet and greet people and be kind of become elected as a, as a comedian that people want to see? So yeah, it was like, I love the idea of that electronic handshake where you could, you know, I looked at the computer as like, this is a window into somebody's home. And if they would allow me into their home, then maybe I can have a shot at building that fan base. And what you did, what Amanda did that I thought was really just so incredible was you were one of the people, aside from the skits and the stuff that was playing on Vine and getting a lot of likes and loops or whatever, the thing that you were doing um, was you were also like boots on the ground where you had things that were online, but if you were in a city, you'd say, I'm going to be here. And you were gathering people together. And I think that was really what set you apart from a lot of people that maybe right at this point we're not as familiar with 
because you treated it the opposite of me. I had comedy that I could say, meet me here, but you didn't have that other element. And the fact that you went out and you made yourself available, it was like that, that grew the entire space for you. So it, it's a mixture of both, right? It's like mm-hmm. you have to have something that people want to see and share with you, but you also want to use this the right way to be able to like, you know, uh, have somebody discover and take a chance on being entertained or listening to you. Yeah. I- <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Clorox. When accounts trust Clorox, the same way we trust essential workers to provide the care they give to us, our families trust us to give them a safe and protected home. Our community heroes trust Clorox to keep places like hospitals and grocery stores disinfected. So I know I too can trust Clorox to provide my home with a safe environment at home we can all enjoy. When used as directed on hard, non-porous surfaces, it kills 99.9% of germs and bacteria on a variety of surfaces. From our kitchen floors to the counters to bathroom tabs to, of course, laundry wipes. I use Clorox disinfecting products on multiple surfaces of my home, especially those high-touch surfaces like countertops, floors, faucets, appliances, and door handles. For me, it's important to share with loved ones and the public in general how they can give the most care for their loved ones because... When, when it counts, counts trust, trust Clorox. Clorox. Why are there trolls? Like, seriously. Like, I mean, you know, me and Amanda started this podcast, the Feel Good Pod- Feels Good podcast, because we wanted to spread as much positivity. And it came about at a time of, like, quarantine and the pandemic. Yeah. And we were like, wow, like, things are, you know, when, you know, sitting here in India as well, we were, you know, going through just so much unemployment. And, I mean people were starving people didn't have food to eat like people were like losing jobs it was and then and obviously even just like like social media digital like things were just really like negative and toxic and and on top of that you have like another lot of people who are just trolling and just like spreading hate and inciting and it's really crazy because it's like there's so there's like there's one side i feel of like society that's trying to push positivity like what you did during the pandemic you were you you decided to bring comedy and 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 you use that to bring people together and make people laugh and lighten up the you know the the environment um me and amanda you know we we put together a a podcast um just to hopefully make people feel good uh in their day and uh but it's just like there's like so many people there's like this other like side of people as well that like they just they just want to keep pushing in the the negativity yeah. and i mean it's it's so i i don't like I, I almost i like i i think everybody is a, it's a form of venting for a lot of people i don't even think that they just come at like they were coming at you dane because <laughs> they have a lot of <laughs> negative shit in their own life you know it's like there's no way right. that can be about you there's that is right. there's no way so now every time i look at comments or i see things i'm just like oh, eh, well i'll take the constructive criticism sure. but yeah like the pure negative shit like no thank you like i wish you the best i feel bad for you and i hope you get through that like genuinely but right. also what the fuck? <laughs> like, don't yeah. Get your, your own stuff. Right? <laughs> it, I know. It never, feel, it never feels good, obviously, to have people come at you with like negative comments, rude comments. But I can tell you more often than not, I've had people write me something. And then years later, I've had people write me again and say, I wrote you something so terrible a few years ago. And then they'll explain I've been in a, I was in a hard place in my life. And people will write me like, long explanations as to why they had a, like abhorrent behavior towards me. And I've actually written people back like within a minute of them writing that and saying, it's all good. It's, it's like, let it go. Don't carry that around anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, wow. I, feel, I feel like you have to be the bigger person the bigger, in that situation. Yeah. Right. And, and also yeah. understand that a lot of all that really is, is people are um, afraid. You know, they're afraid of not seeing their own dream come true. They're afraid of not seeing their own abilities met. And Mm -hmm. I, more often than not, I still once in a while read something that I'll say, holy shit, that's really, man, that's really brutal. That's really mean. But But I'm, I I can pretty much let stuff go. Like, okay, but I, I understand you're like the bigger person. You're letting stuff go. But don't you think 
I don't know, like this was something that a friend of mine, um, you know, uh, a co-star, she had started, but she was like, I'm going to fight cybercrime. She's like, this is, this is cyberbullying and it shouldn't be permitted. And, you know, so, and, and she put out a whole campaign and she worked with the cybercrime department over here and yeah. she was like any negative comments or, you know, people harassing you or, you know, cussing or she goes yeah. like, wh why should that be allowed actually? Like, why do people have that permission? Um, so she, she's actually worked on getting a couple of people I like, I know it was amazing. I love that she did that because it's so like, in a way she had a point. She was like, it made me think as well. I was like, wait a minute, why is it allowed where like someone can just like, if someone walked up to you in the street and started like screaming at you and like doing stuff, like, I guess you could probably get them arrested. Like you have a face, right? And you have like, wait a minute, right. like a cop would also probably come up to them and be like, what are you, what are you doing? You know, like you're, you're harassing this person or um, bullying is also something as well where you get reprimanded for, but like on, on social, it's just like, people are kind of just allowed to do that. Right. With yeah. absolutely no consequence. I guess and it, it's a lot with like, maybe it's like more deal talking to the platforms directly to, you know, I, I feel like they have the most power in those situations of setting rules. And I, I think it is in the community guidelines too, that if you report comments, then you can ban users um, if they're continuously True. being um, like abusive online. But yeah. And also I, I, I think it's wrong. I think people shouldn't do it. But I also think some, for me, I'm like, yeah, use me as your punching bag. Like sometimes it's like <laughs> a form of relief as a, as a release for some people. Right. So maybe they just yeah. need to vent and it's better than physically doing something elsewhere. Like whatever. But there, but there is something to be said for <laughs> yeah. that line of, um, of somebody being like kind of, you know, shitty to you versus like, you know, evil. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. like, oh. You know, to oh, where yeah. people... And, and, and that, uh, of course, we're not, that's such a whole different, you know, mentality. If you're coming at somebody saying like something that's so just fucked up, just be something that's like beyond what yeah. you would say to anybody, you know, even in your private life and somebody's posting that, I don't stand by that. I definitely don't stand by anybody bullying kids. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. hate seeing oh, kids amazing. like yeah. get, uh, you know, get torn into by each other online. So yeah, there's still a lot of holes in this, in this system, but I think just as people that are now speaking, just again, not about kids or just being in the public eye, you do have to expect that like people are always going to take their shots. They're going to have opinions. They're going to probably sometimes say things that's, that are a little bit like over the edge and you have to have thick skin and be able to know that it's not really personal. It says more about them than it does you. Mm-hmm. Or at least that mindset is what uh, helps us. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> what does it do? Right. To not yeah. fall apart. To <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a mental breakdown. Yeah. So, I mean, d sorry. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I, no you. <laughs> no, you. Um, well, I was going to say, like, speaking of, you know, people coming at you and jealousy, you know, that word, word stood, out, stood out to me a lot when you were speaking, Dane, mainly because on your rise to fame, you did it in um, not a traditional way of, you know, gaining an audience and, you know, becoming massive, one of the biggest comedians in the world at the time. And you had a lot of people just even in the industry kind of going against you too and trying to tear you down left and right as well. So how did you, cause that's a lot of weight. I mean, first off being in the public eye and really growing like that to that amount is a lot of pressure already. And then when you have people um, just completely going against you and trying either trying to hurt your business or hurt you mentally, like it's, I been there, you know, it, it, it hurts. And right. how did you deal with it? Yeah, that's, that was one of the most, difficult things to learn, which was you kind of have this idea before you're, you know, in the inner circle, oh, once I'm there, you're going to feel protected by the community. But it, it, if anything else, it's, it's competitive. It's a very competitive industry, all of our industries. And because yeah. everybody wants to be the next shiny, cool thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and some people actually believe that by stepping on you, they're going to be that thing. They're going to take your spot. When once they get there, they're going to learn that's actually nothing to do with what keeps you in your, you know, 
in an enlightened space with your audience. Um, I had it happen to me mostly because I think there was a lot of resentment that I came up and I built a foundation for myself. And then I had a company and a brand and was finding, you know, I was a welfare kid from Arlington, Massachusetts, who by myself became one of the wealthiest comedians of my time. Um, and not to say that I didn't have it and lose it sometimes, you know, when you gamble on yourself in any industry, you're going to lose sometimes. Um, the hardest, hardest thing that I had to learn was what you just mentioned. How can I stay relevant within the community and find like-minded people that aren't in the business of tearing each other down, but are in the business of trying to evolve each other? Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, Lifting yes. Lifting up. I love that. Conversations like this. I mean, really, it's like continuing to do things like this. That's why I was so excited when Amanda reached out. It was like, well, these are the things that people need to hear to realize it's dog eat dog. It's not easy anytime you go for your dream, any dream, any dream. There's going to be people that look at you and say, shit, I, w I want that. And so you need to be ready for obstacles at all times are going to come and try to thwart you. But you've, you've always been really supportive of your friends, people like that, you know, you believe in or you look at and you, you just genuinely want to help people too. Like I remember when I, I had you too help me with like one of these videos I had to do and I was just so shy in front of, can you believe I remember. You remember? I was just so shy in front of a camera and then like, believe it or not. And then it's just like, you, you help push me through it. Like, and it was, I remember that forever, you know, just because like you didn't, let me just be like, oh, laugh at me or do whatever. Right, you were just right. like being super supportive. You you couldn't quit. And the, and the thing that I saw, you know, we've been friends a long time, but at that time what I saw in you was you, you wanted to, you knew where you wanted to be, but you still needed to take the steps of building up who you were to be able yep. to confidently oh, yeah. <laughs> deliver that message. So <laughs> that's what, yeah. I think that's what real friends in this, in this industry do for each other, which is, you know, from time to time, we all need to put a hand down to each other because there is no one level you make it to where you're just like, I'm up here. That, that's, that doesn't exist. It's ever changing. Um, you know, you've got to be resilient. You have to stay positive. And I really think you need to find people that say, keep going. We got to do it again. Another take, another try, another video, another idea, another day. And, uh, and I was glad that at that point I could uh, be a person to say to you, like, I'll champion you. You should continue to work on yourself in that way. Wow. Dane, like, you've achieved a bunch of accomplishments throughout your life. Like, what would be – yeah, no, you know. You know you have. You, actually, wait. Do you know you have? I think you know you have. But <laughs> what is your – what is the one that you're most proud of? Oh, man. Ooh. Amanda, that's hard. Um, uh Come on. I, <laughs> you know, honestly, standing in front of, standing in front of 20,000 people the first night I did Madison Square Garden after I was, when I first was in New York City at 22, I walked by Madison Square Garden one night. I was doing a show in the village at about 2.30 in the morning. I had to walk because I couldn't even afford a uh, cab fare. So I would walk from my apartment all the way to the the village to perform. And I walked by Madison Square Garden one night and I was staring up at it and I just did like kind of like an affirmation thing where I just was manifesting this idea and, and talking to the building in a way like a crazy person saying like, I want to play you someday. I want to come here. I want to stand on this stage mm. and I want to entertain people and I want to entertain the largest crowd a comedian has entertained in, in years. And sure enough, wow. I took that <laughs> stage and I remember I was standing there in front of everybody in the round, because I like to do the big shows in the round. And I did take that moment where I kind of turned and looked at 20,000 people and remembered that kid that stood outside with $4 and not enough to buy a hamburger that night on the way home from my show and wow. telling myself, I will make it to this place. You can't give wow. up on your dreams. I that that is so inspiring. Inspiring. Oh my God. Yeah. And some of the things, the best things that I love reading are um, people's come up stories. You yeah. know, I think there's the most to learn from those. And yeah, it's just like, yeah. <laughs> and it also like, it's good to reflect on those because you remember you're at a totally different place than that now than where you were. And it just like, it 
that just like humbles you and makes you like feel really good. Because like a lot of times, I, for me at least, I don't know for you guys, but I I'm always focusing on like, okay, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta do this, gotta keep growing, gotta get, gotta work on this, gotta do this. And maybe that's my personality. I don't know, but. I think a lot of people in our business are kind of like that. Like Jacqueline, you were looking for your next job. It's like trying to find moments to where you're just like so proud and satisfied of what you accomplished and not to say being lazy with what you're working on next, but being able to really just like relish in those moments. Cause a lot of times we don't like in the Madison square garden moment, did you yeah. have the biggest celebration of your life or? Oh Yeah. Is- what was that night like when you yeah. finished? <laughs> oh, it was, it was like, I wouldn't use this word ever normally, but it was bliss. It was, <laughs> like, it was like, imagine being a 13-year-old kid, the quietest kid in school, and dreaming of this, and then suddenly you're in front of all these people that are there for you, that want to see your show. Um, wow. if, if anything, really what it did too was, Oddly, it's like, you know, we see sometimes people, and I know we know people uh, that made it too soon. Some people make it really young or they make it like in kind of a, almost like in a mistake kind of way and they're not prepared for that. And then they're yeah. not prepared for the come down from what it means to, to hit such a height at a young age. And then for me, I felt like it was the perfect age to go, you know what? I fulfilled this dream. It took many, many years, it took about 15 years before I finally met that. But then it was so nice to go, okay, really now, how do I want to build myself up equally as a person and not just the public persona, right? Mm -hmm. You have to do that same work. I would tell young people that I I talk to now, work on you, work on, work on enjoying, not only chasing, like Amanda said, we want to, we want to prove to ourselves and like, and can I do that? Or I want to, you know, obtain this or grow this, but you still have to have those quiet journeys inward. And those are just as poignant as any big stage you'll ever get. Oh yeah. I mean, it's crazy. I, um, like one of my co-stars, he, he once told me, so he never, he also really struggled. He came up like the hard way and, um, he, he was telling me how, uh, you know, I never, I never had money to go to acting school and I, I, you know, but, I, I, I've been very blessed right now. He's a, he's a big superstar. Um, and he said, you know, like the one thing that hit me, uh, he, he, he just had enough money to buy this one acting book. And uh, in, <laughs> in India, we have like a lot of like copies of like books here, you know, like of the originals, right? You can just buy them on the street. So they're, they're definitely much more affordable. And it was like one of those that he was able to, to buy. And the first page he read was, if you want to be a good actor, you have to first be a good person, okay? <laughs> and, and he was like, and he's like, so I just closed up the book and he was like, that's all I live by right now. And he's yeah. like one of like the biggest superstars here. But oh, like, it's, I love it's that. true because I, it's, you, you do have to actually like work on, on yourself, you know? Like, I mean, it, it, is about, it is about that, being in the moment, being a good person, being, being kind, uh, being empathetic. I mean, I mean, and that empathy runs into your characters as well, you know, so, um, but yeah, the, the groundwork, like the inside work, most important, more than anything else. Yeah. When you can, when you can access those other parts of yourself, all you're doing is, is, um, making yourself available for any situation as you're going for your goal. If you have something inside yourself that's unresolved, well, that might be the very thing that stops you from having that forward progress. So you you energy. I believe in energy and law of attraction and all that good stuff. So, I mean, that's a whole episode of its own, but (laughs) (laughs) that was great though. That was so inspiring. Yeah. Oh no, Jacqueline. Thank you, Amanda. That's absolutely super inspired right now. Yeah. But you're not done yet, Dane. We're not letting you go. (laughs) (laughs) I have some fun facts. Well, Jacqueline and I have some fun facts. We want to share with you. Don't know. Now, you know, Oh shit. Uh, yeah, oh, I know. These are some good ones. It's I'm good scared. segment. All right. <laughs> Jacqueline, you can start us off. Oh, okay, great. So, um, the world's quietest room is 
is located at Microsoft's headquarters in Washington State. The room is built to test the digital PDA developer by Microsoft in 2015. It is so quiet that sound measures in the negative decibels. It, this was achieved by making walls designed to absorb external sounds. Oh my goodness. I've, Did you know that? Did you know that, Dane? Huh? Huh? It sounds like, <laughs> it sounds like a lot of the crowds that I performed to earlier. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but not the 2021 crowds because that's when your tour is happening, right? It will uh, not. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. I can't wait. Fingers crossed. Oh, yeah, I want to get back out there. I'm ready. Yeah. Well, let us know when we'll promote the hell out of it for you because we will be we'll, there. We will be there too. And everybody's invited. <laughs> yes. Not that you need it, but we will be that's there. That's what we just, yeah. Just DM oh. me on Instagram. I still write everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, you're gonna have a lot of work ahead of you. A lot of hours, late nights. All right. Well, I, I feel like rooms like those would make somebody go insane. D doesn't that? Isn't oh, that like God. another? It almost gave pack? me a headache. Yeah. Yeah, like that, complete like... silence just like makes you like too alone with your own yeah. thoughts. Or... But this is like quieter than quiet. This is not even like silence. This, this is like it's like deleting your it? thoughts. Yeah, this is like, what are you supposed to hear if there's like... I don't like that kind of, like, I don't know about you guys, but when I when I go to sleep, I need some sound. I need some mm. kind of like... Waves. Uh, yeah, I play waves. Like, I'll play ocean waves. Mm. One, you know, it's really funny. One night I play, was playing ocean waves and I, I had the remote in bed and I was playing them through the speakers in my room. And then during <laughs> the night, I rolled onto the volume button and I turned oh. the ocean all the way up. Came oh like my a God. tsunami. I think, I think <laughs> it was the scariest <laughs> sound I've ever heard in my life. Oh, what, like wait. a tsunami, yes. The big one. <laughs> the big yeah, one. Knock on wood. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know if I want to be in that quiet room. I wouldn't want to be in the quietest no, room. No, thank you. No, okay. yeah, we're I'm good. Tap out. <laughs> okay, next one. Outside of the bedroom, the most common place for adults to have sex is in a car. Oh. By a show of hands, who here has had sex in a car? <laughs> Jacqueline, put that damn hand up. I remember the car. <laughs> I, remember, I remember the car. It was a it was a it was a Chevy Cavalier, which was like the smallest car. It was a used car oh, that I had growing oh, up. Oh, oh, <laughs> some my, people have been there before. School, my high school sweetheart. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We parked, in the, we parked in the parking lot of a church. Oh my god! Safe, real safe. Yeah, <laughs> that's very romantic. Yeah, it was yeah. Romantic. <laughs> yeah I know. <laughs> Any place is good, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. <laughs> yeah. That was a great fun fact. That was, good. Uh, that was a good one, yeah. <laughs> Did some sharing there. All right. <laughs> there was a Russian game show that would have you steal a car, and if you didn't get caught by the police within 35 minutes, you win the car. Otherwise, you would be arrested. The game show was called The Intercept. I love that. Um, it's like, it sounds like a movie. All or nothing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this should be a movie. I kind of like it. This was in Russia. Yeah, you steal Can the car. Can we make you don't get... this movie, you guys? <laughs> yeah, the three of us. <laughs> with these bangs, I, I feel like I could be... Who are a character. A race you are, car oh, you are, are a character. the bangs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at that. I know. Yeah, I, I they, love you didn't it. even notice at the beginning of it. <laughs> I just cut my bangs. I could, no, I couldn't. That was I the first thing I told her. Yeah. <laughs> guys don't notice things like this. I didn't know. I thought you were in a hat with the headphones. It's <laughs> No, it's not I a beanie. I thought you were wearing a beanie that was made of human hair. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I would, that would be I really cool if you, got, you, right? if you got headphones that had like bangs attached to it. I do That'd wear a lot of faux fur things, so <laughs> I don't blame you. All right. I love that. <laughs> it's part so of your did you know headphones. if you ever cut, wait, oh, you read the last one. Okay, good. All right. If you ever cover your left ear and speak, you hear how you sound to other people. Dane, you're going to have to do this. because I'm, I'm going to do it right now. Oh, I, it's weird. I already have a weird <laughs> voice anyway. This did not help the whole situation. 
Apparently people like your voice because they Yeah, you have a great voice. So <laughs> thank you so very much. Oh wow. <laughs> now it's even better. You go. <laughs> right. I don't know, that that doesn't seem like all that is doing is making an echo of my actual voice. Do not challenge our fun facts. <laughs> okay, I have another fun fact. For wait, you wait, Jacqueline, read number oh. ten and then we'll move on to fan questions. Alrighty. Ooh, number ten. Mm-hmm. <gasps> the egg actually <laughs> chooses the sperm. Human female eggs actually have sophisticated biological mechanisms that actively choose which sperm it allows to fertilize, and it isn't always the first one to arrive. Oh. Wow. Wow. That is a, I like that. That's my favorite fun fact. Mind blown. I always thought it was a chance that. of... I thought it was a chance of luck, right? I thought it was a chance of like... Me too. <laughs> one got there first. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. I mean, I don't know if you guys ever watched that film. Um, oh, what was that? Like, uh, like where these the babies like talk and Boss it was... Oh, no, I know what you're talking no! about. No! Uh, um, wait, what was it? Where I'll find it. And... Uh, talking, right? Look who's talking. Exactly. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Because I... <laughs> <laughs> when when they showed i remember like watching that as a kid and i remember they showed how like the sperm entered and then it got into the yes. egg and they were like all fighting and they were screaming they all had little voices as well right, like, little like, oh my god and like and like when when they were entering the egg as well like it was hot they're like ow 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 and then like <laughs> so yeah, and then now they're saying now we're learning that the egg is actually like, no, no, not you, not you. Not you, you. get lost. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, no, no, um, you. Speed dating. <laughs> it is speed dating. Wow, so it is That's all about the egg. Oh my goodness. All right. And now because we're, we are running low on time now, um, we'll Alrighty. just guide through our feels good friends questions. So the write-ins. And Dane, right. you can be the one that answers all these. Right <laughs> Let's All right, it. here we go. What is your go-to phrase, word, or saying? My go-to phrase, what is it? Phrase, word, or saying? Saying. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, uh, um, oh, man, I, it feels like it's dirty. I don't know why. It's like one of those things <laughs> where it's like, it should be dirty or like a swear, right? Mm-hmm. Does it go-to have to, phrase. right? Like, it can like be anything. Like, I always say, whether it's a, a good thing or a bad thing, I always go, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Uh, <laughs> I find myself yeah, saying I've heard that, that before. So things, you've got to be fucking kidding <laughs> I think I've heard that before. Yeah. Heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. That's a good one, though. <laughs> Jacqueline. Uh, it's funny. That- me? Uh, it, it's funny. Like, you've got to be, well, kidding me. But I mean, like, to find yourself, it's funny that you find yourself in that situation all the time <laughs> you know what my, you know what mine is and I, I think like all right I, I heard people say this to me we're like you know what you say a lot you say really a lot oh. okay, so it's like I yeah, thought it was just, all right all righty then no 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 it was really my bad no it I'm was really it coast. was really because it's like I'm always like really no oh, really really <laughs> really and it's just like everything is Everything's amazing me. Everything is like, yeah, everything amazes me, I guess. I don't know. Like, everything's mine so is, me. <laughs> mine used to be like, which I really worked yeah. hard, hard. on. Mm-hmm. Um, but now it's, uh, you, know? <laughs> you know? You know? <laughs> you know? You know? You do say that, you know? You know? You know? You know? You know? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you add this to places you don't even need to, you know? You know? You know, <laughs> it's me trying you know. to be inclusive. I'm a compassionate person. All right. Number yeah. two. <laughs> uh, Jacqueline, this is you. You can okay. read it. Oh, okay. Do you have a favorite color or a number? Yeah. Are you like superstitious with, with numbers? Mm, I don't. I actually have an issue with numbers. I have, you know, dyslexia. Oh, yeah. yes. Okay. So there's a numbers version called dyscalcula, and I have that. What is that? So ever since I was little, what happens with me is um, numbers just kind of dissipate out of my brain. So like if you were giving me your phone number, by the time you get to the last four, three or four digits, I can't remember the first ones. Uh-huh. 
Um, and so numbers are always been like a little wishy-washy with me, but I do have a favorite number and it's always been 19. It's been my favorite number. My lucky wow. Number. 19. Wow. So do you, thing? wait, do you, do you, you actually base a lot of your, cause it, I mean, like it, it is actually something that happens a lot over here where there's always a specific date maybe that we start a film on, um, or because of astrology, astrology or astronomy, I'm not, I'm not sure which one, but, um, like you, you, you'd calculate what a good number and according to that it, that would be the date or that would be maybe the release or that would be maybe right. um, numerology yeah Numer yeah sorry numerology yes so, by the way oh sorry did you yeah yeah no, no no so so that is something that a lot of people do follow like I mean religiously <laughs> and here's what 19 means if you didn't know Dane do you know what number 19 means no tell me I want to know it means completion it represents completion in numerology. The number is made oh. up of numbers one and nine. Number one signifies a beginning oh. and nine signifies an end, which wow. makes number 19 a message that indicates you're set for the next stage in life. Wow, that's an amazing I number. That. Boom. That like, uh, boom. <laughs> blowing your mind. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> what social media platforms are you on, Dane? Oh, <laughs> I am. Well, okay. So Instagram, that's like the hub, right? That's kind of kinda like the, the home base one. And then, <laughs> and then other than that, I mean, honestly, just probably where I like to do most of my correspondence is lately through Twitter. I just been doing like things where I'm like, you know, retweeting and, and quote tweeting back to people on certain things. And I, I kind of like what Twitter has been doing with their platform lately. So those are the two primaries. That's my new wow. source is Twitter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> A lot lately. I, I never go on Twitter. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> I, 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 I'm Join scared. <laughs> Honestly, like, I know, I, I think I you. Yeah. I get nothing I'm so in sorry. Oh. I just don't. I don't go on it. I have an account. It's there, but like I, I just don't go on it. I'm scared. I'm scared of what I, I think people are really mean on Twitter. No, oh, well. <laughs> they're meaner than. I mean, Instagram is still bearable, but like I think Twitter is. Really Let mean. them inspire you. True. Remember? Yeah, maybe I will go back on. Yeah. 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 Why go. not? <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's a spirit. <laughs> that is all the time we have for this episode. I am so, Woo! so happy to have you on, Dane. I'm so excited to introduce you to Jacqueline. You guys are friends now forever. So and great to meet you. <laughs> Seriously. That was great. Yeah. Oh, this and was really awesome. Jacqueline, it was great to meet you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much for being on our podcast. It means so much. Honest. And like you're... Uh, Amanda, you should have introduced me sooner. I'm, I, but thanks for the talk. Honestly, thank you so much for organizing this, Amanda. This was great. I mean, no, because I'm so super inspired just hearing about your story and hearing about your success story and where you started, like being going from being an introvert to being on Madison Square selling out. I mean, like that is just that. that that's I mean, you know, you're 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 a hustler and you're I mean, you know, a trooper and like yeah. you're an hopefully, achiever. And I love that. Hopefully yeah. some people are watching this and being like, hell yeah. Dane's I can do it too. To this, I can do this. To get this right. done. Yeah. So, right. That's right. Thank Amazing. you guys. And thank you guys so much for listening. Make sure you follow us, subscribe to us, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you listen to podcasts, YouTube now. We got video. Yee! We listen oh to God. our listeners and we're on Instagram <laughs> too. It feels good pod. Love you guys. Love you, Jacqueline. Love you, Dane. And thank you. We'll Love you guys, guys too. Time. See you all next All right. week. Bye. All right. Bye. 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 See ya.